So the first step in understanding the solution of the principal component analysis techniques is understanding linear least squares, which we'll review briefly here. So as we start, uh, already spoke about, we're going to try to fit, give given some data x uh, in Rd, some data, ve uh, some vector, some point in Rd. We'll try to find the linear model, that is the coefficients of the linear combination, coefficients in this vector c, such that the model best fits the data. And uh, we're going to solve this as a minimization problem, where we're going to sum the squared error between each of the entries of this vector and this vector. We're going to subtract these two vectors and sum the, uh, this individual differences. Uh, geometrically, we can see this as a as a, a, a orthogonal projection problem um, in the following way. So let's say we have our data vector here, x, and let's say we have been given some fixed value, phi1 and phi2 now. These are now fixed. Okay, so these are two vectors. So using these two vectors, uh, we can take uh, linear combinations and define a subspace via the set of all possible uh, linear combinations of phi1 and phi2. This is what we call the span, right? And any vector, for example, in between this here, uh, any point in here can be written as a linear combination. Uh, for the, we just have to write, find a different uh, value of c to represent each point. So in any case, but you can see that we're limited. We can only... Um, add these two vectors so we cannot move you know uh, move any uh, we cannot take a linear combination of these two vectors and get a point outside of this plane so we're limited to that so within this plane or within the subspace we'd like to find the point such that the difference between our data point and the point in that space is small as possible so the size of this vector we want to minimize the size of this vector and this is known as the the least squares approximation or the least squares projection written in, in linear algebra format it's given as uh, the minimizer of this uh, sum of least squares error so how does we solve this problem very briefly this is a uh, review so let's write uh, this function here this this uh, this error function here and call it q so the q q of c uh, the optimization uh, parameters here are c, our vector c, so this is our q of c. And of course, we can uh, write this as the, the, the dot product or the inner product of the inside parts, right? So pc minus x transpose times pc minus x, which we can then estimate, uh, open up, right? We can uh, multiply all the terms here, this times this, uh, this times that, minus this times this, minus this times this, right? So if we get term one, and of course, this times this is equal to this times that, right? So minus two of those, that's enough. And this times this is just the norm of the vector x. And we, we use the, uh, the variable q of c here just to emphasize that this is actually a quadratic function, quadratic function, a multivariate quadratic function on c. So, so we would like to find the point in this quadratic function that is minimum, so the minimum of a quadratic function. How do we do this? Well, we take the gradient of q with respect to c. The gradient of this quadratic function will be 2 times this part, right? minus 2, uh, this part transposed. Right? And we set this gradient to 0. So we set gradient of q to 0. So we put the gradient, set it to 0, and we understand that the solution will be given by a linear system of equations written here. These are the normal equations people speak about. And so uh, this is now a square matrix and, and hopefully everything is set and, and fine. So the columns of this matrix are linear independent. So we have an inverse we can write as B transpose B minus one, and that's our solution. So uh, a simplification remark is that if our set of vectors that we are using to make up B as we explained here on top, right, B is our set of vectors stacked in this particular column format. If the set of vectors are orthogonal, then B transpose B is in the, in the identity matrix, 
And so if P transpose B is the identity matrix, the inverse of the identity matrix is itself. And the solution is given simply by P transpose X, 